I was lying in bed with my legs crossed, the turmoil in my heart constantly stirring me up. I pressed a pillow against my ears, but the familiar Japanese dialogue coming from the next room was making it hard for me to resist. I took out a toy hidden in the bedside table and crawled under the blanket. With a muffled groan, I trembled and peeked out my head, my face flushing red. Today marks my second month in America, and the one watching videos next door late at night is my son, Jim, who is 18 this year. Our family business is quite successful, and we are rarely home, so Jim has not been properly educated. I have always been the one taking care of him, and I had hoped he would eventually take over the family business. So, after discussing with my husband, we sent him to the United States to study for a semester and try to get into an Ivy League business school. However, I was worried about him being alone in an unfamiliar country, so I decided to accompany him for a year as a study partner. During these two months in the United States, this was not the first time I had heard such sounds coming from next door. At first, when I first heard these sounds, I went to the next door to see quietly. Through the crack in the door, I saw Jim sitting in front of the computer, watching a naked woman on the screen, one hand holding a tissue and the other hand under the table. This boy, he doesn't even wear headphones. I only glanced at it and returned to my room. I didn't pay much attention to Jim's activities at night, after all, everyone has their curiosity about sex at that age. Not to mention, even when I was 18, I also sneaked into the blanket late at night to do these things. But as Jim's late-night activities became more frequent, I realized that something was wrong. He seemed listless every day and lacking enthusiasm in his studies. Even I couldn't sleep due to the sounds coming from his computer. At my age, I am going through a period of craving intimacy. Since coming to the United States as a study partner, I hadn't had sex for two months. A few days ago, I couldn't bear it anymore and bought a small toy, which I unexpectedly used tonight. No, I need to talk to Jim about this tomorrow, I put away the toy and decided to talk to Jim the next day. If he continued like this, not only would he not be able to get into business school, but he might also have health issues. The next morning, I got up early to make breakfast for Jim. After preparing breakfast, I went to wake him up. Jim looked tired, and it was clear that he had stayed up late last night. After brushing his teeth, washing his face, and finishing breakfast before going to school, I stopped him. Jim, wait a minute, I have something to tell you, Jim looked at me puzzled. What's wrong, mom? I looked at his face, opened my mouth, but didn't know how to start. Sex is something that we conservative people never talk openly about, especially between mother and son. Never. Mind, be safe on your way he looked at me strangely, nodded, and left. I sighed and sat on a chair, lost in thought. After a moment, I pulled out my phone and called my husband. Since I couldn't bring myself to say it, I would let him do it, my husband, you need to talk to Jim about this. I instructed my husband seriously. But my husband responded nonchalantly, I thought it was something serious, he's a 17-18 year old boy, what's wrong with masturbating? Forget it, don't worry about it, he'll stop once this phase passes. I won't tell you anymore for now, I have a meeting to attend, my husband, listening to the tone on the phone, I was somewhat angry. It's always like this. Every time I talk to him about our son, he reacts the same way. That night, I heard the same noises coming from Jim's room, but this time in Japanese. Could it be that Jim is interested in Japanese women now? My heart was in turmoil. I know how open-minded American teenagers are. There are plenty of parents at 17 or 18 years old, if he gets mixed up with bad company and drugs, Jim's life could be ruined. No. I can't let him go down the wrong path. I got out of bed, ready to talk to Jim, but as I reached the door, I heard a noise outside. When I opened the door, I saw Jim enter the bathroom in an awkward manner. Why is he going to the bathroom? I stood still for a moment, then knocked on the bathroom door. Jim, are you almost done? Mom needs to use the bathroom, there was some noise from inside the bathroom. Mom, I. Just wait for me. I'll be done in a moment. Jim's voice sounded panicked. Two minutes later, Jim finally came out of the bathroom. He kept his head down, his face red, avoiding eye contact as he squeezed past me. Mom, you go ahead. His voice was so low that I could barely hear it. Frowning, I walked into the bathroom and caught a faint, 
familiar smell of fish. Sure enough, this kid came to the bathroom to take care of business. I sighed helplessly and decided to talk to Jim thoroughly. However, as I was about to leave the bathroom, my body froze. I saw a white stain on the underwear I had thrown in the laundry basket. Is this? I couldn't believe what I was seeing on my underwear, feeling numb. As the mother of an 18-year-old, I certainly knew what that was. But knowing made it even more shocking. How could Jim do this to my underwear? Could it be that he has feelings for me? I couldn't bear to think further. He is my own son, and I am his mother. This incident made me abandon the idea of speaking openly with Jim. I didn't know how to face him now. Taking a deep breath, I threw all the clothes in the laundry basket into the washing machine, pretending like nothing had happened, and went out. As I passed by Jim's room, I saw that the light was still on, and the shadow of two legs could be seen under the door. He was listening at the door. I flashed my eyes and returned to my room. Lying in bed, my emotions were complex. How did my son become like this? My heart grew more disturbed and restless. I even started to think, what if Jim suddenly tries to do something to me, how should I handle it? Alice. What are you thinking? He is your son. He would never do such a thing, I shook my head vigorously, trying to rid myself of this absurd thought. But it seemed to have taken root in my mind and couldn't be shaken off. I scratched my head in frustration, took out my phone, and started searching online. I had thought Jim's behavior was abnormal, but after a quick search, I found many similar cases online. They said teenagers were at their most curious and sexually driven during puberty. And the closest person and easiest object for them to fantasize about were their parents. I was astounded. This was something I had never considered possible when I was back in my home country. I had heard of Oedipus and Electra complexes, but I never thought it could be like this. So, was Jim's behavior normal after all? I kept browsing and stumbled upon a group specifically dedicated to solving the problems of teenagers' sexual confusion during puberty. I decided to join a group related to Ivy League business schools. There were white, black, and Asian parents in the group, all with the same goal of helping their children. Upon joining the group, the group leader asked me to introduce myself and talk about the issues my child was facing. Group members who had relevant experiences would help with advice. I briefly described Jim's situation. Soon, many parents in the group offered me suggestions. Some said it was due to excessive curiosity, and I should encourage him to get a girlfriend, others suggested hiring a prostitute to give him a sexual experience and put an end to his behavior, the more shocking advice was to have a sexual encounter with Jim myself. Reading through these responses, my head was buzzing. What kind of people are these? Do the thought processes of these foreign parents really be so novel? The more I read, the more unreliable it seemed, so I decided to leave the group. At that moment, someone added me as a friend. I looked at the profile picture, a glamorous woman in her 30s or 40s, hesitated for a moment, and accepted her friend request. Hello, my name is Elizabeth. Are you also here as a study partner with your child? Looking at the message she sent, my eyes lit up. I hadn't expected to meet another study partner in this group. My name is Alice, is your child also preparing to apply to a business school? I asked. My child is already accepted into a business school. Where do you live? Let's meet up. My son had similar issues to yours, but we've resolved them. I can share my experience with you, she said. Excitedly raising my eyebrows, without hesitation, I sent her the address. To my surprise, Elizabeth lived in the same community as me, less than a mile apart, within walking distance. I agreed to meet with Elizabeth at a coffee shop in the community the next day. The next day, I arrived at the coffee shop and saw a woman in a sexy plunging v-neck dress as soon as I entered. Her face was adorned with elaborate makeup, and her hot red lips were swinging on a thin straw. Elizabeth? I tentatively called out. She turned, smiled joyfully, yes. You are Alice, right? Elizabeth got up and hugged me. I was somewhat uncomfortable with her intimate gesture and smiled awkwardly, yes, I'm Alice. 
Sensing my discomfort, Elizabeth looked me over and said, Alice, this is America. You look great, and your body is in good shape. Why dress so conservatively? Look at me, I turn heads wherever I go. I smiled and asked the waiter for an iced Americano. I was naturally quiet, and while I understood what she was saying, I couldn't bring myself to do it. After chatting for a while, I decided to get to the point. Elizabeth, you mentioned that your son used to fantasize about you too and would sneakily do those things late at night, just like my son. How did you handle it? He has no focus on studying with such behavior, how can he possibly get into business school? I'm so worried. I eagerly sought advice from Elizabeth. Elizabeth blinked, and with a meaningful look, she said, my method may not be something you'd accept. What method? Just tell me. I pursed my lips. Looking around, Elizabeth whispered, he's at the peak of his sexual impulses, right? And he fantasizes about you. So, find a child's mother around your age and have a sexual encounter. Once he knows what it's like, his curiosity will be gone. Kids' curiosity is easily satisfied. From my experience, in about a month or two, your son won't think about these things anymore. Elizabeth's revelation left me stunned. You mean I should find someone to have sex with my son? I repeated. Yes, that's how I resolved the issue with my stubborn boy. Elizabeth nodded, then leaned in to ask me, by the way, is your son attractive? If he looks good, I can help you out. I stared at her in shock, you. You're suggesting you have sex with my son? Elizabeth gave me a glance, why are you so surprised? Alice, this is America. You shouldn't be so conservative. Besides, think about it, if you let your son continue like this, what if he tries something on you in the end? Even if he doesn't, what about those women outside? Who knows if they're clean or carrying diseases? I'm different. I have a health check every six months, my body is absolutely healthy. My eyes flickered, finding some sense in what Elizabeth was saying, but also conflicted as it went against my moral beliefs all these years. I'll think about it. I didn't agree to Elizabeth's proposal, but I didn't object either. Shrugging, Elizabeth gave me her phone number, think it over, and give me a call. Alice, really, it's not a big deal. Before leaving, Elizabeth patted my shoulder. Sitting in my seat, I took a sip of the iced Americano, choked, and coughed repeatedly. When I returned home, my mind was filled with the things Elizabeth had said earlier. Until Jim returned from school, his eyes didn't seem quite right to me. When Jim noticed me staring at him, his face turned slightly anxious. His gaze avoiding mine, not daring to meet my eyes. Mom. I. I didn't mean it last night, I'm. Sorry, I. Jim stammered, apologizing with his head down. I was momentarily surprised, then realized he must have thought that I was mad at him for using my underwear for his activities. What did you do last night? I looked at Jim, pretending to be oblivious. Jim hesitated for a moment before blushing and shaking his head. And no. Nothing. Jim mumbled before quickly running back to his room. That night, as I was about to go to bed, I heard Jim heading to the bathroom again. My eyes narrowed, and I sat up on the bed. Was Jim going to the bathroom to use my underwear for those activities again, like yesterday? I squinted, staring at the door. After about 15 minutes, Jim returned, and I quietly opened the door and went to the bathroom. I went straight to the laundry basket. Thankfully, there was no white liquid on my underwear today. I breathed a sigh of relief, it seemed Jim was just using the bathroom. However, my eyes were drawn to a curled black hair on my underwear. My face immediately darkened. This kid, Jim, using my underwear for those activities again. I stormed out of the bathroom, wanting to confront Jim, but held back. If I raised this with him, Jim's self-esteem would be shattered, and he might no longer be able to face me, or worse, resort to something extreme. Standing at Jim's bedroom door, I thought for a while, then returned to my room. I picked up my phone and made a call. Hello? Elizabeth's voice sounded sleepy indicating she was probably asleep. 
Elizabeth, I've thought about what you said during the day. When are you free? Can you come and help me? I said solemnly. I'll come to your place tomorrow. Elizabeth excitedly replied. I hung up and silently stared out the window, unsure if my decision was right, but I couldn't let Jim continue like this, there was trouble brewing. The next day, Elizabeth arrived at my house. I asked her how to go about it, I couldn't outright tell Jim, here's a woman for you, go to bed with her, okay? Elizabeth smiled and said, it's simple. Prepare dinner tonight, say I'm a new friend of yours, have a few drinks, and there you go. For some reason, Elizabeth seemed very proficient at this ordeal. But I didn't dwell, maybe she had helped other parents in similar situations before. That night, Elizabeth still wore that sexy plunging v-neck dress. I noticed that Jim's eyes never left Elizabeth from the moment he saw her, his throat subtly swallowing saliva. His gaze seemed to want to dive straight into Elizabeth's cleavage. Elizabeth raised her eyebrows at me and poured a glass of wine for Jim. Jim glanced at me, quickly declining the drink. Elizabeth picked up the wine glass and pressed it into Jim's hand. I saw her pinky hook into Jim's palm. My eyebrows furrowed, but for the sake of solving Jim's problem, I pretended not to notice. Jim blushed even more, looking perplexed. It's okay, Jim, have a couple of drinks with Elizabeth and me. I spoke up. Jim took a sip. One thing led to another, and Elizabeth quickly began drinking with Jim. One glass after the other. Soon enough, Jim's face was flushed, and he couldn't stand steadily. Elizabeth helped Jim up and led him into the room. Jim, let me help you rest. Elizabeth supported Jim, whispering hotly in his ear. At that moment, Jim's eyes were fixed on Elizabeth's chest, showing no reaction. Elizabeth smiled at me before taking Jim into the room. I watched their backs, opened my mouth, but ultimately did not intervene. Well, since it had come to this, I might as well try Elizabeth's method. If it didn't work, I would figure out another solution. As I cleaned up the dishes on the table, I suddenly heard Elizabeth's loud voice. My face stiffened, and I turned back to see that Elizabeth hadn't closed the door properly. She kept shouting for half an hour. I was washing the dishes fine, but Elizabeth's shouting made my heart race. My legs went weak, and I leaned on the sink, biting my lip, looking at Elizabeth as she emerged naked. Alice, what's wrong with you? Elizabeth took a bottle of ice water from the fridge, looking puzzled at me. I glared at her, it's all because of you. Elizabeth looked at me strangely, then laughed, Alice, you haven't touched a man in the two months you've been in the USA, have you? I shot her a look, changing the subject, how is Jim doing? Elizabeth's eyes lit up, licking her lips meaningfully, Alice, I didn't expect your son to be so good. He nearly knocked me out while we were busy. My face darkened. I asked you about Jim. I said sternly. Elizabeth quickly apologized, sorry, my bad, let's talk business. Your son's situation is a bit severe. When we were. Together, he subconsciously called out your name. Elizabeth's words left me even more silent. Don't worry, I've seen this kind of thing before. Let me spend a month or two with him, and I'll cure him of this issue. Elizabeth raised her chin confidently. My mouth twitched, suddenly, I felt Elizabeth was a bit unreliable. Just be honest, how many boys have you done this with? I seriously asked Elizabeth. Elizabeth rolled her eyes. I can't remember every little act of kindness I've done. Asking was pointless. Never mind, let Elizabeth try. I would check on Jim's situation in a few weeks. Over the following weeks, Elizabeth came to my house every day. Eventually, it became Jim going out to meet her. Surprisingly, with Elizabeth's involvement, Jim stopped watching videos late at night, and I didn't catch him using my underwear inappropriately anymore. Most importantly, Jim's grades improved. It was a pleasant surprise. Who would have thought Elizabeth was quite capable? A month later, it was time for the Ivy League Business School entrance exam. I accompanied Jim to the exam location with Elizabeth. Shamelessly, Elizabeth blew a kiss at Jim. Blushing, Jim glanced at me and dashed into the exam room. 
I grabbed Elizabeth aside. Elizabeth, tone it down. I'm his mother. Can you stop flirting with my son in front of me? Elizabeth shrugged, I'm helping you. You've seen Jim's improvement, right? As I looked at Elizabeth's entitled behavior, I felt uncomfortable. At some point, she seemed to have forgotten she was only here to help me with Jim's problem. Elizabeth, Jim's grades have improved a lot recently. He'll probably pass the exam this time. After the exam, please stop seeing him, I calmly told Elizabeth. Elizabeth's face changed, then she smiled, Alice, are you afraid I'll really run away with your son? That's not what I mean. After Jim gets into business school, he needs to focus on his studies, and I don't want him to be distracted. I looked at Elizabeth calmly. Elizabeth eyed me deeply, tilted her head, and said, I think Jim is in good shape. Let me spend one more month with him. I promise, after a month, I won't see him anymore. No. I refused without a second thought. The entry process for the Ivy League business school was swift, results were out within a week after the test, with enrollment in two weeks. If Jim continued mingling with Elizabeth for another month, he would surely fall behind. From today, you can't see Jim anymore. I told Elizabeth sternly inside, Elizabeth, I appreciate your help, but you also have children. I'm doing this for Jim, and I hope you understand, Elizabeth fell silent for a moment, then smiled. I understand, I understand. She waved at me and walked away. I watched Elizabeth's departing figure, my expression changing several times, before sighing deeply. Now, I regretted letting Elizabeth help me in this way. I wasn't sure if what I did was right or wrong. After a few hours, Jim came out of the exam. Mom, where's Elizabeth? As soon as Jim appeared, he looked around. Feeling heavy-hearted, I calmly replied, she had something come up, so she left. Oh. Jim seemed a bit disappointed. Quickly changing the subject, I asked, how did the exam go? Jim confidently replied, Mom, rest assured, I definitely passed. I smiled upon hearing this, as long as he passed, that was all that mattered. I took Jim out for a celebratory meal. The next week was an agonizing wait for the exam results. During this time, Jim kept asking me about Elizabeth, wondering why she hadn't come to see him. I could only tell him that Elizabeth had some family issues back in her home country and had to go back, but she would return later. Jim seemed dejected upon hearing this. It was evident that Jim was genuinely infatuated with Elizabeth. I was anxious but powerless. Finally, after a week, the business school sent an acceptance letter, and Jim passed the exam. Excitedly, I shared the news with Jim, who was also thrilled, seemingly rejuvenated from the melancholy of Elizabeth's departure. Mom! I knew I could do it! Jim exclaimed, hugging me tightly. My son is the best, I chuckled, patting Jim's head affectionately. Mom, call Elizabeth and share the good news with her. Jim's eyes sparkled as he urged me. Feeling a bit awkward, I forced a smile and picked up my phone. Elizabeth, Jim has been accepted into the business school, I announced. Instead of an immediate response from Elizabeth, I heard a sound of clapping through the phone. My eyes widened as I looked at Jim, whose expression had soured, as he moved away with the phone. After a moment, Elizabeth's voice came through the line. Congratulations, Alice. I have some good news to share with you, too, Elizabeth said with a smile. I was taken aback, what good news? I'm pregnant. What did you say? I exclaimed, eyes wide. I said, I'm pregnant with Jim's child, Elizabeth's voice filled with amusement. My face quickly changed, and through gritted teeth, I demanded, Elizabeth, what are you trying to do? Get an abortion. Sure, but abortions are damaging to the body. You wouldn't want me to come back to you because of this, right? Also, I'm sure you wouldn't want Jim to find out either, Elizabeth's voice came through, leaving me with a furrowed brow. What did she mean? Was she looking for money? How much do you want, just say it. Reluctantly, but to prevent her from approaching Jim, I agreed. I'm feeling generous, $100,000 should do. That's not too much for your family. My eye twitched, muttering, $100,000?
Are you out of your mind? Elizabeth chuckled lightly before saying, just ten thousand. Alice, if you're not willing to pay, then the intimate photos of me and Jim, along with my pregnancy test report, will be sent to the school's administration. Elizabeth. You took photos? What are you up to? That's blackmail. Through gritted teeth, I see that. Hee <laughs> hee, well, to pay or not to pay, that is the question, Elizabeth sneered. At that moment, I realized Elizabeth had been aiming for this from the start. Exhaling deeply, I regained composure. I can give you the money, but you must ensure those things are destroyed, and you absolutely cannot reappear. Otherwise, you will regret it. Don't worry, I'm a professional. I've never gone back on my word. You can rest assured and send the money. After hanging up the call, my mind was consumed with Elizabeth's words. A professional? What did she mean by that? My eyes widened in realization. Could it be that she specializes in hanging around those groups, targeting people like me who are trying to solve their son's problems? Then approaching to offer help, and finally using pregnancy and intimate photos to extort money? This way, she can sleep with an 18-year-old guy and make money, killing two birds with one stone. The more I thought about it, the more plausible it seemed. No wonder Elizabeth was so proactive and skilled. I didn't want to give her the money, but since she had intimate photos of Jim in hand, I had no choice. Jim had finally gotten into business school, and I couldn't let him be ruined by this. I transferred $10,000 to the account Elizabeth provided. She sent me a message, Alice, we won't meet again. After that, she deleted all her contact information with me. I let out a sigh of relief, at least I could pay to make the problem go away. Mom, what did Elizabeth say? Did she mention when she'll come back? Jim looked at me hopefully. I gave Jim a deep look, shaking my head. No, she said she'll come back after sorting out some family matters, but the specific time is uncertain. Oh. Jim turned and went back to his room. For a long time after that, Jim's mood was quite low. I knew he was still thinking about Elizabeth. But I had no other option but to watch. Fortunately, a month later, a father and daughter moved in nearby, also here for study and accompanying their child. Jim seemed to really like the girl and gradually forgot about Elizabeth. As for me, after not having any contact with men for a long time, once I started interacting more with that man, I crossed my own boundaries.